Hello, this is Bishop William Koenig. Welcome to Catholic Forum, a weekly presentation of the Office of Communication of the Diocese of Wilmington. Now, here is your host, Bob Krebs. Thanks, Bishop. For several decades, Catholics in the United States have had a go-to resource for inspirational daily reading, personal prayer life help, and ongoing faith formation. Magnificat Magazine. On this episode of Catholic Forum, after a news update from the dialogue, we'll talk to the editor-in-chief of Magnificat, Dominican friar Father Sebastian White. Father White will tell us about his journey back to Catholicism, his calling to the Dominicans, Magnificat, and more. Plus, he'll give us a preview of his keynote address at the September 28th Diocesan Marian Pilgrimage. Father Sebastian White is my guest on this edition of Catholic Forum. I hope you find today's program informative and inspirational. Now the news. Thank you, Bob Krebs. With news for the Catholic community of Delaware, Maryland's Eastern Shore, and beyond, I am Joseph P. Owens, editor of The Dialogue. While the presidential election is top of mind for the nation this November, Maryland Catholics are focusing on an amendment that would enshrine abortion into the state constitution. The Maryland Catholic Conference, which represents the state's Catholic bishops in Annapolis, is joining other local Catholic leaders in urging Marylanders to vote no on question one, the right to reproductive Freedom Amendment. We oppose the Right to Reproductive Freedom Amendment as it contradicts the fundamental principles of respect for human dignity and the inherent right to life, the bishops of Maryland said in a statement issued in the spring. Our opposition to this initiative is rooted in our unwavering concern for the well-being of women and children. Baltimore Archbishop William E. Lurie, Washington Cardinal Wilton D. Gregory, and Wilmington Bishop William E. Koenig, whose dioceses each include parts of Maryland, said in the statement that enshrining abortion into Maryland's constitution would further perpetuate a throwaway culture, divert attention and resources away from women's well-being, and risk health care providers' rights. They also said the amendment would severely limit legislative flexibility, preventing elected officials from enacting laws that respond to changing circumstances or new evidence related to abortion policy. People can register to vote online up until October 15th, If registering by mail, the envelope must be postmarked by October 15th. In-person registration in Maryland continues through Election Day, November 5th. Bishop Koenig visited St. Mark's High School on September 12th to preside at the opening mass of the school year. School officials report that more than 800 students are enrolled for the 2024-25 academic year. After the Mass, St. Mark's Student Council was installed, as was the school's new president, Patrick Tiernan. Organizers of the October 5th Eucharistic Congress in the Diocese of Wilmington announced a dedicated family space at the event at the Convention Center in Ocean City, Maryland. This specialized area is designed with the youngest attendees in mind, catering to children up to age 12, said Dan Penn, director of the Office for Catholic Youth, Young Adult, and Family Ministry. The family space will offer an assortment of faith-based videos, activities, and interactive games designed to enrich the spiritual lives of children in a fun and accessible way while offering a break from the schedule of the Congress. Understanding the importance of family participation in faith activities 
we require that at least one parent to accompany their child at all times within the family space, Pin said. This stipulation ensures a safe and nurturing environment for all, promoting a shared spiritual experience that families can carry with them beyond the event. We look forward to welcoming your family to this special space dedicated to our youngest participants. The cost for the event is $35 per person, with the total capped at $140 per household. More information and a link for registration can be found at cdow.org slash Eucharistic Congress. And don't forget, for up-to-the-minute news, visit thedialogue.org and pick up a copy of the Dialogue newspaper in the Catholic churches and schools in the Diocese of Wilmington. For Catholic Forum, I'm Joseph P. Owens, editor of The Dialogue. This is Catholic Forum. I'm Bob Krebs. Father Sebastian White is a Dominican friar, a convert to Catholicism, editor-in-chief of Magnificat magazine, and on September the 28th, he will be the keynote speaker at the Diocese of Wilmington's annual Marian pilgrimage at Holy Spirit Church in Newcastle, Delaware. Welcome to Catholic Forum, Father Sebastian White. Happy to have you here, Father. Thanks a lot. Happy to be here. We're going to be talking about uh, the Marian pilgrimage coming up, and I'm going to ask you to give us a little maybe preview of your address. Before we get into that, sure. um, let's talk about you a little bit, please. Tell sure. us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Thanks. So I grew up in Maine. Um, love New England. If you've been reading Magnificat, you probably see that I write about uh, my, my childhood often in the editorial, and my family I was blessed with a very a good family. Um, I was baptized as a Catholic, as an infant, actually. Um, my parents were married in the church, but then sh right after I was baptized, my parents had gotten involved in a Protestant church. Um, and so I was raised with no practice of the Catholic faith and no memory of, of ever really be of being Catholic. Um, then I went off to college. I went to a Christian college in, in Massachusetts called Gordon College. I had a great experience there. And through different professors, the influence of some professors and reading, I began going to an, an Anglican church, a high Anglican church, um, and then began to read my way into the, into the Catholic church, really. Um, I met uh, a Catholic author and convert named Thomas Howard. He had a big influence in my life and um, helped me a lot. And so right, basically the year I graduated, I began an RCA program in, in Massachusetts. Um, and entered the uh, was confirmed and made my first holy communion at the Easter vigil of 2004. So mm -hmm. I really had the experience of being a convert, but I'm not technically a, a convert because I was baptized as a Catholic. I have to make that point to emphasize the importance of our Catholic baptism. Mm -hmm. And then, how did you discern your vocation to the Dominicans? Uh, after college, I end, um, and also through Thomas Howard, um, the, the the author and convert. He he died a few years ago. Um, um, but he was a wonderful, wonderful man. And in his, in his retirement, he had taught a small theology institute in Austria. And so he told me about this program. It's called the International Theological Institute, the ITI, um, in, a, in a small town, a former Carthusian. It was then in a former Carthusian monastery, um, a couple of hours from Vienna. Franciscan University of Steubenville also has a study abroad program in the same place. Um, so I, I applied and was accepted. I went over there for, for a two-year master's degree in theology. Um, I was just getting so into learning about the faith and um, so fascinated by it. I had studied economics as, a, as an undergraduate, but was sort of captivated by uh, the, the Catholic faith. So I, I went there to study, and after two years, I, um, I actually was hired to, to work for the Steubenville program that's also mm -hmm. there. So I ended up spending four years in Austria, and during that time, I had a Dominican professor. He was a He's from. He was German, but the southern Germany and Austria are the same. Were the same province, and so he was from the Priory in Vienna. He would come out to the, our campus a couple of nights and then go back to the Priory. And one summer, I wanted to learn German better. Um, I asked him if I would be able to stay in in the Priory there in Vienna and take a German course. And he asked the community, and they said yes. And that 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 experience is what really did it for me. It it, it opened my eyes to to seeing that the goodness of that life and 
praying together, studying. Um, and there were, it was, there was young men in, in that community. It was their kind of formation house. So that was really the experience that first, that was the first catalyst. And then I, as I investigated it more and looked more into it and I got in touch with the Dominicans here in the United States, applied, and then I entered in 2008. God, God is good the way he um, brings uh, people yep. uh, to himself. Yeah. That's right. Very, very uh, suavely, uh, <laughs> very often. So, yeah. 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 So, um, so since you beca be, have become a Dominican, um, mm -hmm. what, have, what have some of your assignments been? Well, um, so our novitiate for this province, it's the eastern province of the United States, the province of St. Joseph. Our novitiate's in Cincinnati, so my first year was there. Uh, we have a wonderful parish there called St. Gertrude's. Then I came here, where I am now, to Washington, D.C., um, for our um, for priest studies. So it's our, we have a big priory across the street from the Basilica, the, the National Shrine, and mm -hmm. Catholic University. Um, it's called the Dominican House of Studies, and it's our it's our seminary, really, in graduate school. So I was here for five years studying, and then when I was ordained in 2014. I was assigned to New York City, and I, uh, as the chaplain at New York, at our we have a parish in Greenwich Village, mm -hmm. and I worked in the chaplaincy at New York University, NYU. That was a wonderful experience. Um, I did that for four years, and then in 2018, Father Peter John Cameron, also a Dominican from my our province, he, um, that was the time he decided to to move uh, to hand on the Magnificat uh, um, job. He had been the founding editor um, in the late 90s. Um, and when he was moving on, the publisher asked him to, to recommend another Dominican. And to my, to my amazement, he, he suggested me, and our provincial um, supported that. And so in, in the summer of 2018, I, I moved actually to, to another of our locations in New York City um, where it would be a little easier for me to get to the Magnificat offices. They are in uh, Yonkers, New York, just north of, the, of New York City. And so... Um, in, in the summer of 2018, I began to work as the editor of Magnificat and living in our Dominican community in New York. And then you, um, you got another job, additional yes. job. And, yes, and, that's and right. Yes, got you back yeah. to D.C. That's right. So I was doing that for four years. And then um, in the summer of 2022, um, our, my province asked me to take on a new role at our seminary back here in Washington at the Dominican House of Studies. So I'm the, what's called the Master of Students or the Student Master. Um, and I oversee the formation, the, 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 uh, the overall formation of the brothers as they're studying and uh, being formed themselves. So it's a great place to be. I'm happy to be back here. And the Magnificat um, team and the publisher was happy for me to stay on and, um, and do it from here, from Washington. Um, practically, it just meant I had, to, I had to move the books that I use for the meditation of the day um, down here to, to Washington. So those, those all come from published works. Um, but we still have a team in, in New York, and I'm in touch with them all the time. And um, everything else now, we, of course, with a computer, you can you can do just about anything. So mm -hmm. I remember when the Magnificat first came out in the, as you said, in the late '90s. I was working at EWTN at the time, and oh, I just wonderful. remember how excited everyone was and how popular Magnificat became. It seemed like all of a sudden everybody was talking yes, about it, and everybody that's had right. a copy in their hand. Um, was that something that the that the Dominicans um, w was behind, or is that just happened that they had a Dominican as the first editor in chief? Yeah, so it was actually founded in France. Uh, Magnificat um, is is really part of a French publishing company. It's it's owned by a Catholic family, or it's run by a Catholic family. Mm. Um, so they, <clears throat> or it's at least a the, yeah they, they con kind of control. It's a big publishing group in in France with a lot of other parts to it. They have a liturgical book publisher and kids books and other things that aren't, that aren't even all religious, um, but you know, all good, good things. And there's a Christian, uh, Famille Chrétienne, that's a, a Christian kind of ma magazine or newspaper in, in France and <clears throat> several, a lot of different parts to this, to this company. And Mr. Pierre-Marie Dumont, who was a, a layman who was working for that company, founded, uh, had the idea, conceived of the idea in the early 1990s to create something that would help families um, and lay people pray together and pray more easily, something that would kind of be a one-stop shop. Um, 
who would have morning and evening prayers, mass, readings, reflections, and articles. And so in, in um, I believe it was in the December 1992, I think, 92 or 93, in the French edition was, was founded. Mr. Dumas has 12 children. Um, his wife, Bernadette, and, and is wonderful. And they, 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 they're very knowledgeable about art. Um, they, uh, so that's, that's, that explains a lot of the, the beautiful artistic mm -hmm. part of Magnificat. He's, he writes a commentary on the cover still. Um, and, um, you know, his, they, he's just very knowledgeable about, um, about those things. So Magnificat brought together so many different aspects of our faith. It's beauty, it's uh, the liturgy, it, you know, lives of the saints, faith formation. Um, and then uh, it did well. It really took off even there. And so after five years, you know, he, they had the idea to, to launch it in the United States. And he was introduced to an American Dominican, Father Cameron. And at that point, um, they realized like it was, you know, it was a it was a great match. You know, so um, and and it just uh, also, as you say, it took off here very quickly and became, um, you know, you see, you kind of see it everywhere. You know, yeah, I, I love sure. to hear stories. People, I have I've lived with friars that have seen it on people re reading it on the train or in an airplane or in an airport, and lots of neat neat um, connections. Mm -hmm. So why should why should someone subscribe to Magnificat? Well, I think um, uh, it um, it brings so many parts of our faith together very easily. So it, it adds convenience. Um, and where you might have to have lots of different books or lots of different sources to, um, uh, to, to, to get everything that's in Magnificat. So mm -hmm. there's a, there's a, it's very compact. Um, also, um, it, you know, the most important thing we, we should do is talk, talk to God. We, are, we live our faith you know, to understand and um, participate in the Mass and um, to pray on our own, pray individually. To get to know the communion of saints, um, to see the, the the rich tradition and culture that our faith has produced, and you know stories of historical uh, events and and the art, um, and so Magnificat brings all these things together. It makes praying kind of simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, it helps us to pray in the in the same rhythm. It's not technically the liturgy of the hours, but it's it's um, kind of in, in, modeled in in the same way. So you have the psalm and some intercessions and a scripture reading and a hymn and praying the Benedictus or the, you know, the Canticle of Zechariah and the Canticle of Mary, the Magnificat, each day and mm -hmm. each morning and each evening. So it really helps you to pray in a, in a profoundly Catholic way. Um, and also to be, to be to, the, the meditation of the day really is one of the, one of the most notable, I think, and sign, signature features of Magnificat. So that exposes you to so many different kinds of spiritual writing, church fathers or contemporary authors. Um, that would be much harder. I mean, you'd have to have a huge library and reading all so many different things mm -hmm. every day. And so, part of the part of that is we try to curate it, you know, to actually really speak to to ordinary people, and in a way that's often a delight and a surprise, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's. Uh inexpensive and it's delivered to your mailbox every month so it's, yep that's it's right got a lot, and there's got a, a lot going for it yeah that's sure. right and and there's an app version mm -hmm. um right that's right so for a few if you subscribe to the annual edition and um then you, you know it's just a few dollars a month and then um actually if you get a few years if you pay for a few years then the price comes down even more mm -hmm. um there's an app version as well so if you get the print then you get the app one also for free and some some people you can also subscribe to just the app um, and that's, it's actually really well designed. So, you know, most people, the, the, the print version, the physical version of Magnificat tends to be still what people really are, love and are attached to and want to hold in a church. But the, um, the app version is actually quite, quite well done and beautiful as well. My guest today on Catholic Forum is the editor in chief of Magnificat. Uh, Father Sebastian White and uh, Father will also be the keynote speaker at our uh, annual diocesan Marian pilgrimage, which is taking place on September 28th at um, Holy Spirit Church in Newcastle, Delaware. Father, as, as someone who um, wasn't raised in the Catholic Church, um, how did you develop your devotion to Our Lady? Um. Well, uh, that's that's a great a great question. I mean, uh, really, as I was coming into the church, 
um, and, and being confirmed and going through that whole process, you know, I was, I was learning about all the different parts of the faith and began to pray, um, began to pray the rosary. That, that would be, I think, the main, the main way. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, certainly learning about the place of Mary, getting over that objection that, of course, a lot of non-Catholics have, like, why do we pray to Mary and isn't Jesus the Savior? Um, and, um, and the dogmas of Mary, you know, her uh, the Immaculate Conception and the Perpetual Virginity and those things. But um, the, the Assumption also, it, it, these are, these are ex, uh, extraordinary but b- b- beautiful uh, doctrines and, and claims of the Catholic faith um, that make sense when you, when you think about them and, and uh, read about them and learn. You know, everything about Mary, her dignity comes from her closeness to Jesus. Um, she didn't invent herself. She didn't make her own greatness. Um, it's all because of her uh, role and the graces that God gave to her um, in being the mother of Jesus and the mother of God. So um, learning about it, being kind of drawn, drawn to her through that process and then beginning to pray, actually to speak to her and to pray the rosary chiefly. Um, certainly once I became a Dominican, um, you know, we wear a scapular, we, we sing the Salve Regina every night, um, we have rosary, you know, I, I wear a rosary, you know, most mm-hmm. people don't do that, that's, that's, that's fine, you know, you can put it in your pocket. But we have um, a big, larger, usually 15-decade rosary hanging from our belt, um, and we pray the rosary every day, um, and we preach about, you know, Mary, and we preach about um, her intercession and her, her care for us. So. Really, it just it just developed in in kind of in harmony with with all the other things that I was um, learning and discovering about the Catholic faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you give us a little preview of your um, sure. synod address that uh, you'll be giving at our um, Marian pilgrimage? Sure. Well, the 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 theme, you know, that that um, Father Lewis, who's uh, kind of one of the chief organizers of the mm-hmm. of the day, um, asked me to speak on for two, two talks. It was, our Lady of the Word and Our Lady of the Eucharist, um, especially you know in this uh, all the emphasis we've had on on the Holy Eucharist over the last couple of years, um, and to think about her in relation to these um, uh, these parts of our faith. You know, when you at Mass we speak about the Liturgy of the Word. You know, the first part where we're hearing uh, the Scripture readings, and and then the Liturgy of the Eucharist with the, the sacrifice of the Mass on in the altar and Holy Communion. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the broad uh, uh, um, idea for, for, for um, the day. And um, in, in the first part, I, I really focus or will focus on Mary's faith and how faith um, is what anchored her life. And, you know, faith is not um, a natural knowledge. Faith comes from a, a belief and a trust and a confidence in what God has revealed. And so even um, things that we don't necessarily feel or sense, right? We, we believe in faith. And this is very, very important in the life of Mary, you know, to, to believe the word of the angel that she was going to become the mother of Jesus, to, to continue to have confidence in God throughout the course of her life, even when um, she didn't fully comprehend or, you know, Mary didn't understand everything about the future, but her faith um, gave her a peace of soul and a great confidence in the Lord. And similarly, you know, when we're at Mass and we're hearing um, uh, the, the scriptures and um, the things that have, have happened to us as Catholics, our baptism, to receive Holy Communion, for example, to go to confession, right? These things, even when we don't feel it, even when we're troubled or suffering, um, like Mary, our faith can um, give us great peace because it comes from who God is, his, his trustworthiness and his word. And then in the Eucharist, right, what do we do at Mass? We're not just there to watch Mass. We're not just there to watch what the priest does. Um, and we're not even there just to receive Holy Communion, right? The Mass, the significance of the Mass uh, is principally also in that it's the sacrifice of Christ um, uh, given to us in a sacramental mode, you know, theologians say. Um, and this means, you know, we, we bring ourselves, we unite ourselves to that sacrifice. Whatever is happening in our life, whatever, whatever uh, burdens or crosses or intentions or petitions we have, 
we unite them to the sacrifice of Christ. Christ gives himself wholly to us at Mass. He didn't hold back, you know, part of himself. Um, and similarly, that's the case for us. Mary united herself to Christ in his passion in a way that excelled all the other saints. And I mean, her charity, her love for her son meant she suffered greatly with Jesus. She wasn't crucified, but we call her the queen of martyrs, right? Mm -hmm. um, because of the depth in which she united herself to Christ in his passion. And we're invited to do the same. Everyone has sufferings, everyone has crosses in, in his or her life. And Mass is the time when we can, um, we can put them on the altar with our Lord. The diocese is having um, its first um, Eucharistic Congress in uh, almost 10 years uh, on October Wonderful. the 5th. And uh, this is a great way to honor Our Lady and to prepare ourselves for uh, the Eucharistic Congress, which will be in Ocean City, Maryland. So um, I urge our listeners and our viewers to try to make it to the Marian Pilgrimage on September 28th. It's uh, located at Holy Spirit Church, which is in Newcastle, Delaware. It's right by the Delaware Memorial Bridge. So if you want to come from from um, southern New Jersey, that would be great, or Philadelphia, or Baltimore, or any place in Delaware or Maryland's eastern shore. It's, um, it's absolutely free. Uh, come and enjoy the day. And if you'd like some more information, uh, you can visit cdow.org slash Marian Pilgrimage. Um, Father, how can our listeners and viewers get more information about the Dominicans? Um, if, if someone's listening, they yeah. might feel um, uh, maybe a calling. Well, there, there are, um, there, Dominican order exists all over the world, and there are four provinces. Um, uh, and the, you know, the, the religious order is usually d divided up by geographical regions. You know? mm -hmm. um, and um, but the eastern, the province that I belong to here on the East Coast, our, our uh, website is opeast.org. Mm -hmm. um, we have a good website. Um, the student brothers here, we have a, a blog, a daily, uh, it's a few times a week. It's called Dominicana. So if you type in Dominicana Journal or Dominicana Blog, you'll see that there's a the, the blog posts are many are, are often very very good, and um, we have a print journal. The brothers publish a little print journal every year too called Dominicana Journal. Um, I'm involved with, with these things here, and those are great ways to kind of learn about the way we think, the way we approach spiritual topics, and um, you know aspects of, of our life. You know, um, so those would be those would be great ways uh, actually. Great. And if um, anyone would like to subscribe to the Magnificat, it would be Magnificat.net. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that, that should get you there. Magnificat.com. Um, I, think, I, I think it's Magnificat.us.net, actually. But, but if you just actually type in Magnificat.com, it'll, okay. it'll take you right there. Okay, yeah, perfect. and you can see the, for the, uh, the magazine. And we have lots of children's books, tons mm -hmm. of children's books that are really beautiful and mm -hmm. Um, also regular books at book spirit on spiritual life for, for adults as well. So. Great. Father Sebastian White, it was a real pleasure talking to you, Father, and we look forward to seeing you uh, in Delaware on September the 28th. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to it. And you can see a video of my interview with Father Sebastian White by searching Diocese of Wilmington on YouTube. On the next Catholic Forum, we'll talk Eucharistic Congress with Bishop Koenig and Archbishop Richard Henning, who will be giving the keynote address at that October 5th event. Don't miss it. To hear this and other past programs, visit cdow.org slash Catholic Forum or search us on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or Amazon Music Podcasts. Also, don't forget to like or follow us at facebook.com slash Catholic Forum. Please join us again next week for another edition of Catholic Forum. Have a great day. This is Bishop William Koenig of the Diocese of Wilmington. Thank you for listening to this edition of Catholic Forum. As we conclude today's program, please join me in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.